So, hi everyone, my name is Andreas Schem. I'm Director of Ecosystem and Operation at Human Protocol. And today I'm here to talk about the future of work, but not only that, also how we enable global collaboration on chain in various different aspects other than work as well. Um, so, first of all, what is the future of work? The future of work really is a projection to see how, well, the future of work will evolve. Will it be more digital? Will it be more global, more freelance? And the answer to all of these questions is, of course, yes. We already see that through COVID. More and more people have started to enjoy working from home, working digitally. There's a whole lifestyle around it, the digital nomads. And with that, we just see that continuing to grow around one third of the population already is working freelance or in the gig economy in one way or another, and this will continue to rise up to 50% by 2030. Um, there's of course a lot of talk about AI swallowing labor and in some areas that might be correct, but we still believe that there's lots of human work still needed to be done, and that is what we are here to offer. So how does the human infrastructure support work? There's more and more questions in terms of if there's more freelancing, if there's more global collaboration, how is the work done, by whom is the work done, for whom is the work done, and where is it done? And at all of this, at the intersection, it's human protocol. So we have offered um, a protocol that really is like a baseline layer where you can offer your own services. You can run on that, so we are more like an infrastructure where you can launch jobs or any kind of requests, actually. So if you look at a job, it's just a request for work, basically, and you can have other types of requests. You can request reviews, you can request even opinions through surveys, polls, A-B testing, etc. And Human Protocol offers a way for anyone to offer that um, whole life cycle, basically, from the launching of a job, the requesting, to finding the right person who should do it, um, remunerating them, storing a reputation, handling if there's a, um, if there's a dispute, basically. All of that can be done at Human Protocol. Our biggest use case right now is machine learning. I'll get in, into that for a se uh, in a second. But what we pride ourselves in is that we are very much focused on transparency and fairness. We've heard this a lot about intermediaries charging high fees, and this industry is no different. If we lo look at platforms like Upwork or Fiverr, there's up to 30% of commission fees that they charge, and we assume protocol at maximum if you use everything that we offer, every service that is attached to this ecosystem, we're looking at like eight to 10%. There's also an issue of workers getting paid unfairly. It's intransparent. Only the issuer knows what other people are offering. So it's really not clear how much you can earn, how much you can charge. And together with all of that, we wanted to provide a solution that's different. We have escrows. That means work is being paid for in advance. And once it's being done and assessed through oracles, machine learning, if possible, to judge the quality, there's a reputation assigned and a payout being done. This is low commission, low transaction fee, high transparency, because everything is um, also, in one way or another, stored in chain. Because there's so much different opportunities and different services that can be offered, not just by us, we're a protocol. We have a coordination layer that we call the routing protocol, which really means we are using that to route jobs from A to B to C to and so on. So basically anybody who wants to offer a service that someone else could use, we are kind of like the platform as an explorer, so that you can really explore what is being offered, what is possible, what job types are possible, how can that be enhanced, what else do I need? There's always a question of compliance, of tax, is there a fiat to crypto conversion? It's in the works, and stuff like that. So basically, you can discover all of this, and if you have an idea or say like, hey, why don't you offer this? Please talk to us, and maybe you can launch and list your own service on Human Protocol as well. But basically, the idea is with a truly decentralized project that anyone can participate and earn rewards and offer the service, run the dApps, and we'll um, determine for each job which chain is the best, which worker pool is the best, which application for the work to be done is the best, and then it gets routed to there. We are already multi-chain, for example, on Polygon, Moonbeam, Binance Smart Chain. I believe we just announced Multiverse X, and we have a couple of other EVMs in the work as well. So that is um, to support the whole idea of multi-chain. We already have completed roughly 600 million tasks on-chain. Um, on 
until January 2023. Uh, that was mainly in the machine learning area for data labeling, image recognition, and stuff like that. But we have over 700,000 signups already in our own wallet, um, in our own app that was designed as a beta and just as a showcase, and it blew up a little bit. So now there's more and more coming. We see more and more use cases onboarding as well. And we are happy to educate anyone who wants to build on this, who wants to run with this, or wants to launch a job maybe as well. We have a dashboard because we believe that everything should be very transparent in terms of what's happening. You can see which networks are supported. If you want to scan, I'll pause for a second if you want to do that. Um, but basically, yeah, this is a list of all the escrows that we have and all the tasks that we have done. We also work on impact. Um, that's a very cool industry for us because we want to not only, well, help with that uh, in terms of work. We also want to have help with impact. So we sometimes fund the research. We sometimes fund the attachment of tools, for example, an audio labeling tool to combat um, language discrepancies in India, where there's over 200 plus different dialects. So there's a text conversion so that doctors can work in the field. Uh, we also work with the Salk Institute, that's probably best known for the polio vaccine, and among other things. And they, together with CVAT, a computer vision annotation tool, they work on saving the bees and understanding animals better, behavior patterns. And yeah, that is one of the use cases in the machine learning space that's a little bit more with real world impact for good. We also see different areas. For example, in the area of DeFi, market making is, of course, a big one. Traditionally, there's mainly on centralized exchanges, especially bigger players that need deeper pockets. So it's a little bit more um, difficult for individuals to participate in this. So with Hummingbot together, Hummingbot is a tool, it's a bot for crypto trading and arbitrage, and they have worked in integration with human protocol, where it's basically taking the idea of DeFi across exchanges. So how does that work? Anybody can fund a campaign where they want to say, I want liquidity between a certain token pair or between certain exchanges. They can fund the campaign, and then anyone could come in and offer their liquidity, provide volume, and our Oracle system will track the volume provided, the volume traded, and then issue the rewards, everything on chain. If you're interested in that, please reach out to Hummingbot especially. I'm not a techie, so I can't really help there. But I'm happy to put you in touch with whoever is interested in decentralized market making across exchanges and trading pairs as well. Another very interesting area, and I believe we will hear more about that in talks afterwards, is in climate change and carbon especially. We are working with one use case that is looking to tackle the UN Scope 3 problem. That means the supply chain, a chain. So companies not only in the future will need to track their own emissions, they will need to track the emissions of the whole supply chain altogether. And with that, we are helping to build a solution where you can grab data from everybody involved. And of course, you need a way to access that, to process it. This is not possible on an individual scale. So business process outsourcing, which literally means that you take business processes, break them down into smaller amounts, and outsource it so that a global workforce can uh, help with, well, getting this data processed, can work on this together. And through that, we have the scalability, and we can enable any kind of data processing in a way that's never been seen before. Now that I have a video prepared which doesn't work in this PDF, if the tech could run that video, just to show you a little quick overview of um, how the data extraction works. Yeah, could you run the video, please? If not, I'll... Apparently not, no problem. So basically, if someone's interested, I'm happy to show them a demo and run them through it. It's working? Oh, it's working, just not on my screen. Perfect, thank you very much. So this is really, basically, you can send over any kind of information, highlight what you want, and someone can extract the data, and it will be put together in a form. For example, if we look at the EU taxonomy, you need to provide lots of financial data, and you can outsource that. You can deliver the data and someone else can extract and fill these forms and sheets for you, which is a massive pain, but it's literally that easy. Um, you can upload it. This is obviously not a demo. There will be a better user interface around it. Um, but yeah, we have done uh, started doing that for a couple of documents already. Thank you. 
Another area that we are very interested in, and we have seen a uh, solution built for that, is the market research. If you have a product, you need feedback. On QA, you need feedback. Is it the right logo? Is it the right slogan? What performs better in certain countries? We have seen cases where some designs, some words were very well approved in one country, but it was a derogatory term in another one. So you can test that basically by region, by age, so you can really segment it, and you only pay like very strategically. You know exactly how much you need to pay and how much that will get you from the beginning. You can ask any kind of question. You can track inflation with that. You can ask about predictions. You can ask about current um, events, data scraping, A-B testing, survey polls. Um, that is a massive use case for many different companies. We also have a grants program. That means that uh, anyone who has an idea that can utilize our whole workflow, basically, from issuing requests, monetizing them in a creative way, we would love to hear results. If you see a service where you say it can't be that you don't have that already, please reach out to us. We always love these enhancing features, and we're happy to work with anyone um, that has a cool idea, and we'll give out a grant um, to build it, to build a proof of concept, and to see this come to life. One of the examples is from the gaming space, Signa X. It's a company that offers NFTs for the metaverse, but they also now offer, through using human, a challenge program where you can launch decentralized challenges, where you can get them to complete tasks, for example, in-game or in-app, and be rewarded outside of it. So that's a cool tool for user acquisition and a very creative use of human protocol. So thank you a lot for listening. If you have any questions, any ideas, any feedback, Either ask him now or find me at the conference. I'm around for a little bit. Thank you very much.